right, let's try to predict the future. All of this is recorded and will be remembered till the end of the time and uh, also at the end of this season. So pressure is <laughs> on. Uh, Grant, I'm going to begin with you. We have our first question. Who will be have a breakout year for the Atlanta Braves organization? Uh, I'm going to go with Michael Harris. And this might sound like a weird response because his first two years in the majors have been so good and I think have established him as one of the top young stars and young talents in on any team in either league. But when you look at what he did in the second half of last year, really from June on, hitting 335, OPSing over 900, nearly a 2020 year for him. He's a gold glove quality fielder. If he's able to put together a full healthy season, and I think he's going to move up in the order as well, this could bode well for Michael Harris and a Braves offense that was already powerful with what he's already done. He could just be that much better this year, to make a long story short. Reeves, another player that is coming in this year, um, and we just talked about him. You're not really listening to the hype about him not being good in spring training. Jared Kelnick's your guy. Yeah, I really like Jared Kelnick. I really do. He was a first-round pick by the Mets in, uh, six years ago. Got traded to Seattle. We saw some potential from Kelnick in the first two months last season. He uh, hit 280 with 10 homers in April and May. And I think there's a lot of, a lot of pressure being a uh, top-10 pick, cracking the big, league, big leagues with Seattle. Now he comes to Atlanta, stars all over the place. I think the pressure is going to be off Kelnick to just relax and swing the bat, and I think he's going to have a good season. I think it's incredible that we're this far in, and Austin Riley is such a superstar, and yet he still feels underrated on a roster with all these guys that could potentially win MVP. He's going to be my breakout star this okay. upcoming season. Last year, 37 home runs, 97 RBI. I think he takes that next, next step and is decided as maybe the best third baseman in all of baseball because of the hitting, because of his ability in the field. He could be really, really good this upcoming season and finally be a guy that they don't think is underrated at the position. All right, our next prediction. Who will be the Braves' best pitcher and the best shot of the Stry Young? Grant, go first. Spencer Strider is the answer to this. If All you right. have anything else on your paper, please mark through it. No, I mean, <laughs> this is going to be, I think, a career year for Spencer coming off a season in which he established himself as a preeminent strikeout pitcher in all of baseball. I'll talk a lot more about him later on. This is not a knock on Max Fried, who didn't get the opening day start after getting it for three straight years. Spencer Strider, I think, is just that good. He's that elite, and I think he's going to cement that legacy or start doing it anyway. Reeves, are we drawing a line through your prediction? <laughs> I still want to be like college game day with like all the same picks and then one turns out to be wrong. Right, exactly. So, <laughs> so I'll, go, I'll go with Max Fried and simply because he's in a contract year. It's hard to believe four of the seven seasons Fried's pitched in Atlanta. He's had a sub three ERA and his career year in Atlanta is just a hair over three. So he's been really good. You can't forget about just two years ago, Fried finishing second in the yeah. Cy Young Award right voting. Yep. And uh, I think he could have a season just like that again, just like I touched on in the beginning. Very good player. I mean, look at how that left-hand arm slide. He's a guy that a lot of <laughs> players and other organizations would love to have on their team. Finally, we want to make some predictions on Ronald Acuna Jr. in 2024. He had an incredible year last year. Grant, where do you think he lands in the home runs and stolen bases category next year? Well, as someone who tracked every homer and every <laughs> stolen base last year on social media, exhaustively so by the time we got to the end of it, I know the 50-50 thing is ridiculous. I know I shouldn't be talking about it. I shouldn't be thinking about it. But when Ronald was asked about it in spring training, he said, I'm not going to put any limits on it. Right. Ozzie Alves has been his hype man for years. He called for it in, what, 2020, 2019. So yeah. I think he can do it. I'd love to see a 50-homer season from Ronald. He can certainly get the steals. That'd be unbelievable. Reeves, what do you think? Yeah, I would love to see that, too. That'd be yeah. amazing. I'm going to go 42-65 for, for Acuna. It's kind of similar to last season. Obviously, he had the 70 stolen bases. But I think just a hair, a hair off of that, I know he was really trying to reach that goal last year and get over 70. So I think maybe not trying to, to reach that goal, but could go for the 50. I could see the 50 homers more than the 70 it. stolen bases yeah. this year. 50 homer leadoff, man. That's too. crazy. About that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just unbelievable. I think for me, I got to have a prediction as well. I'm a little bit worried about the knee. Naturally, Ronald had a great season last year. No injury issues, but my pick is going to have a 40-40 year. And guys, before you jump all over me and say that <laughs> I'm really insane good. and that I'm a hater on Ronald Acuna Jr., a 40-40 season is still insane. Right. The only difference is Ronald had an even better season last year. So, guys, calm down. 40-40 season upcoming for Ronald Acuna Jr. Very excited to see what he does in 2024.